and stride and glide. On today's show, the ups and downs of cross-country skiing. We help you get started. A lot of concentration going on right now, Tyler. Minnesota's family-run resorts might be disappearing most places, but not here. Life on the trail led to one of Minnesota's newest resorts. Plus, we offer a few do-it-yourself marinades to get you ready for holiday cooking. Minnesota Bound, presented by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems. Hi everybody, Bill and I welcome you to Minnesota Bound. Up first today, a winter activity that promises to be pretty popular considering all the social distancing and COVID stuff. That's true. Grass country skiing is a great way to get outdoors and an awesome way to get some exercise. So we decided to show you how to get started. Cross-country skiing happens to be the oldest type of skiing. In fact, it originated in Norway in the 18th century as a way to chase wild game or to collect firewood. With its Nordic roots, no wonder it's still popular today. If you've ever had the desire to try this historic activity, I'm here at Elm Creek Park Reserve to show you how to get started. Hi, Tyler. Hi, Laura. How are you? I'm good. Are you ready to try some cross-country skiing today? I am ready to try some cross-country skiing. Now, I have to tell you, I am a novice. I've done it a couple times. It's been years, so I'm ready to give this a shot one more time. Great. Awesome. We need three different things, our skis, boots, and poles. So for our skis, we're going to use a classic cross-country ski here. The key thing with this ski is that on the ski base, there's two different zones, a glide zone and a kick zone. That's going to help give us traction when we're moving along the snow. Awesome. Now this ski is not looking like the cross country ski I remember that's fat and it's wood. So we've come a long way with the skis. Correct. We have a lot of uh, advancements in technology for equipment. It makes it a lot more lighter, efficient to use, easy for ourselves as well. And so we got our skis. Next we have our cross country ski poles. Poles are nice because they help provide us with additional power. And uh, balance maybe? And balance, <laughs> yep. For beginners, balance is definitely good too. And then next we got our boots, also a lot lighter. And what we're looking at is kind of a flexible toe because in cross country skiing we're going to roll off the toe. Do you need a permit to cross-country ski at the park? Yes, there is a day pass that's required if you're just coming to ski for the day. You can also purchase an annual pass, which you can do online, and it's good for all of our Three Rivers Park District locations to ski. Well, I've got the equipment. Should we hit the trail? All right, let's give it a try. Okay. So let's put our skis down and get started. So what you're going to do, your boot has a little pin in it right there. We want to line that pin up right here behind this bumper. And you're just gonna push down on that toe and you hear that click. Yep. That's perfect. So now just pick up your boot and your ski, make sure you're in. All right, so now that we're in our skis, the most important thing to remember is just to stay relaxed. We just wanna keep our whole body loose from our ankles all the way up to our shoulders. Always wanna have a little bend and flex in our knees and ankles. Pretend like you have some grapes under there. You're gonna try and stomp those grapes with your feet and then you're gonna roll off onto the other ski. So you're just compressing down under the ball, rolling off on those skis and our arms are just gonna swing naturally like when we're walking. Just like that. A lot of concentration going on right now, Tyler. Focus on the ski, that stride and glide. Yep, so just like that, and then you just engage the poles naturally. Perfect. All right, let's keep going and go to the right. Okay. How many miles of groomed trails do you have here? So here at Elm Creek, we have over 10 miles of groomed cross-country ski trails. In all of our parks in Three Rivers Park District, we have over 100 miles of groomed trails for cross-country skiing. Nice. And then always remember, dude, just to look up. Oh, yeah. You can see where you're going. <laughs> enjoy the scenery. Instead of concentrating on my skis. Exactly. It's a little bit of a trust level you need to do that. Tyler, is this sport for anybody of any age? Yeah, cross-country skiing is a great lifelong sport. Kids can start as young as when they're three or four years old, and then people can continue skiing all the way up into their 70s or 80s. And I'm finding that it's good exercise, but it's not extremely exhausting. Like your heart rate gets up, so I'm sure you're burning a lot of calories, but it's not something that's super extreme. Yeah, absolutely, and it really depends what you want. You can just go out for a nice leisurely ski to be outside. If you want to do more of an intense workout, you can do that too. Woo! 
Well, thanks, Tyler, for a great day. Absolutely. You did a great job. Awesome. Well, there you have it. Cross-country skiing. It's rich in history, and it's a fun activity for all ages. But most important, it's a wonderful way to glide through those winter snowy months outdoors. Ready to do some more? Let's keep going. All right. This is where the hill takes you. <laughs> Such a good time. If you'd like more information on where you can get started cross-country skiing, head to the Minnesota Bound Facebook page. I've posted my top six destinations around the Twin Cities. Straight ahead, a growing outdoor destination worthy of brand new resorts right here in Minnesota. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Connecticut, Rapala, Star Bank, and by Ice Castle Fish Houses. Next, a story about a Minnesota destination bucking the trends. You know, at one point here in Minnesota, there were more than 3,000 family-run resorts. Now that number's down under 1,000. But we found one area that is changing that trend. Here we go again. A five-month grind of snow and cold and more snow. Yet, in one Northwoods town, Life rolls on at a heated winter pace. In Cuyuna country, winter won't scare anyone away. Signs of that hang all over the place. Some people love where they live, but I love Cuyuna. Vern and Tiffany Lewis just cemented their spot. A sign of new life and this new resort on an abandoned mine pit lake. We were going to build our own cabin. That's what we were going to do. But Vern Lewis had a dream to take 20 acres that once looked like this and turn them into all of this. I want people to enjoy the property as much as we enjoy it. And this was the way to do it. The Lewises built a resort with cabins and these, well, call them tree towers. I just wanted something that, you know, when you pull into, everybody goes, wow. And that's what I wanted. Brings a lot of people back to their childhood. You know, tree forts, tree houses, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Crazy to think that in a time where Minnesota resorts perpetually close doors, this one could open. To understand is to look around and then listen to that oh-so-strange sound in the woods. That signals progress. Oh, it's awesome. Han and Chow Win could not resist riding Cuyuna's winter trails. We love it. We do a lot of mountain biking in the winter, fat biking too, because I always say that nature is the best doctor. So after a stressful day, a week at work, coming out on the trails, do that. It's really great. Cuyuna offers up 40 miles of winter trails, 20 of them groomed just for fat tire bikes. People come and they say they were the best trails we have because there's an IMBA certification. It's international mountain bike. We have that on these trails. That's one mine pit draw. Jesse Williams talks about the other. That water is so crystal clear that we'll have no problem, you know, seeing the fish come in, chase the spoons. Jesse runs the local bait shop hotspot. Airbag. He thinks winter fishing lures in anglers. We notice, especially on the weekends, all the guys coming up doing this for the trout thing. The DNR stocks trout in Cuyuna's deep mine pit lakes. Manual Lake sits full of rainbow trout. Orange chartreuse, that kind of color combo is pretty good. They stock them every year. This 4,500 trout every year they put in. Oh, there's a fish for sure. Oh, might be back. Yep, that's him. Come on, let's get one here. Keep working it, Bruce. Some anglers choose to sit in dark houses. Oh, there's one. Another one. Where you can see the fish bite. Little guy. Boy, he's a little shaver. 
Little rainbow trout, first one of the morning. But not the last for our crew. Oh yeah, look at that color. Stop going away from it. You want that. <sighs> it just blows my mind, you know, from all the years growing up and driving by the pits and, you know, not a single footprint, not a snowmobile track. Now to go by and look out, guys using it and it's, it's awesome. Trails, trout, and too much fun. <laughs> Cuyuna's new winter norm. <laughs> it's the pits. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lewises love it. Absolutely. Best choice we ever made, probably. It's about the people. We wanted to share with them what we enjoy. So we're going to start with the ginger Asian marinade. Up next, recipes for your next holiday meal with a Minnesota bound twist. Closed captioning brought to you by North Dakota Tourism. Many times in our Wild in the Kitchen segments, we talk about the importance of brining or marinating your wild game before you cook it. That is the important key for a delicious wild game meal. So today we're going to do a little DIY marinades, and one is a ginger Asian inspired marinade, which will be geared a little bit more towards wild birds such as pheasant, quail, grouse, you name it. And the other one is a carne asada marinade that is geared towards venison, elk, or your red meats. All of these ingredients typically are found in your kitchen. So we're gonna start with the ginger Asian marinade because it's so fast, it's so easy. But the first thing you need is a freezer Ziploc bag. And what we're gonna do is throw everything into the Ziploc bag and it makes it really easy to throw in your wild game, put it in the fridge, and you're ready to go. So our first ingredient here is about a half a cup of orange juice. Second, we have about three tablespoons of sesame oil. This is kind of the secret ingredient. Sesame oil has a ton of flavor. Also, we have about a quarter cup of minced ginger. Put that in there. We have some chopped onion, and you can use purple onion, scallions, white onion, whatever you choose. I'm using scallions today. About a quarter cup of soy sauce. And last but not least, we have chopped garlic. That's about four cloves of chopped garlic. Last step is just to mix it around before you add in your wild game. And you want to marinate your wild birds anywhere from four to 24 hours in the refrigerator for that real deep flavor. All right, moving on to our carne asada marinade. Again, this is one of my personal favorites. I've used this plenty of times. It's so delicious. And in fact, you don't need to necessarily be cooking a Mexican meal to enjoy it. So first things first is chopping about a quarter cup to a cup of cilantro. And the best thing about marinades is that you don't necessarily need to be exact with the ingredient size. You can kind of play around with half cup, quarter cup, whatever you feel like. All right, we finished chopping our cilantro and we have all of our ingredients ready here. Uh, we have some chopped jalapeno, chopped garlic, and we are ready to assemble. So first things first, we're gonna start with two fresh squeezed limes, the juice of two fresh squeezed limes, that is. We have four cloves of garlic. Okay. Four cloves of garlic going in. We have two tablespoons of white vinegar. Go in the marinade. A teaspoon of salt. We have our chopped cilantro. Half a cup of orange juice. Again, we have our freshly chopped jalapeno pepper. Now this is to spice level desire. So I don't use the whole jalapeno, I just like a little bit of spice. And we also have some olive oil. And last but not least, we have a couple dashes of black pepper. So I'm gonna give this a little stir here to mix all the ingredients up. Mmm, smells delicious already. And the reason I have this marinated in a small glass bowl is if you wanna make your cooking process faster, uh, you can freeze your marinades and use them at a different date. So I recommend if you are going to freeze them that you freeze them in a glass bowl. And also, one last tip for you, if you use the marinade once, it's a one and done process. You have to throw it out. 
So there you have it, two marinades to make your wild game meal wildly delicious. Straight ahead, the story of a Minnesotan making a difference in this very special duck slip. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota DNR. Radco Truck Accessories. And by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. and organic. Dig in, ladies. Nice catch. We tackle four seasons every year, but I only care about two, hunting and fishing. Equip your ride for life's adventures with Lear Truck Caps, ultimate toppers custom fit to your truck. Lear's J-Clamp Pocket Technology provides a rock-solid fit and clean look. Add Lear's exclusive locker to pack and protect all your gear. Visit your neighborhood Radco store or shop online at radco.com. When your truck looks good, you look good. You know, a lot of people understand the value of protecting Minnesota's wetlands. My dad, Ron Shera, recently visited a Ducks Unlimited chapter dedicated to protecting Minnesota's wildest places. Minnesotans Making a Difference, brought to you by the Partners Group and Wyzetta, over three generations of unmatched service. You've probably heard about the value of wetlands in Minnesota. You may know how important these unique landscapes are to wildlife, ducks, geese, songbirds, and even water quality. You may also know thousands of acres of wetlands have been drained and destroyed over the decades. It's also possible You've never heard about the Marsh Lake Ducks Unlimited chapter in Victoria, Minnesota. <laughs> if so, you should. Welcome to the uh, 37th, I think, uh, Marsh Lake Ducks Unlimited event. The end result of the day is we're gonna try to raise some money for conservation and- The uh, fundraising consists of an afternoon of pheasant hunting and a social get together. It's the passion of what you're trying to accomplish, and it just so happens we've got a group of people here that just have a passion for conservation, and the bonus is that we like to duck hunt. We're gonna have five guys in the blinds. Ducks Unlimited members have for decades used a day of bird hunting combined with a fundraising banquet to pay for the work of preserving and restoring wetlands. Ducks Unlimited is a conservation organization for not just ducks, but a lot of wildlife. And we get anywhere from 30 to 50 members a year. And it's not the quantity of members, it's the quality of the members that really make this chapter sing. Cool. <laughs> Their song is about a wildlife area called Marsh Lake in western Minnesota near Ortonville. It will be dedicated to honor a special member. Welcome to the Rod Burwell dedication. Yeah! Yeah, Rod Burwell is a lifelong member of our Marsh Lake chapter. Unfortunately, he passed away last year, and so this dedication is to say, hey, we appreciate not only what he's done in the past, but the opportunity that the dedication will give going forward for all sportsmen to use. Ducks Unlimited from time to time uh, recognizes a, a man worthy of, 
of such an honor to have his name inscribed in bronze. I think this whole dedication is pretty special. You know, for us growing up, our, our family bonded around hunting and bonded around Marsh Lake, bonded around the ducks, and for the club to turn around and actually honor dad with a track to land is really, really special to my brothers and I. On that note, the private money this has raised uh, recently helped us leverage $10.5 million. We were just approved by the uh, Outdoor Heritage Fund, the Lassard hey, Sands hey, Council. So hey, here's right. the Lassard Sands Council. Yes, cheers. Cheers to the Marsh Lake Ducks Unlimited chapter for making a difference. Good job. Keep up the good work, right? That's right. Well, that about does it for us today. Until next time, make sure you introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.